Hey everyone, I'm Valdemar, Docker Captain, AWS Community Builder, HashiCorp Ambassador, Sneak Ambassador, Cypress Ambassador, and a DevOps consultant with over 20 years in IT. I've worked at Amazon, IBM, and both big and small companies. Today I help teams master DevOps, containers, and cloud technologies. On this channel we break down DevOps, Docker, and all things automation so you can level up your skills and build powerful, scalable systems. And I know the kind of phrase that makes engineers panic. You've got a Terraform interview tomorrow, you ready? Take a breath. Today I'm sharing 10 Terraform questions that actually come up in real interviews and how to answer them like a pro. But more importantly, I'll explain them clearly, practically and with real life examples. So you don't just memorize the answers, you understand them. All right, let's dive in. Question one, what is Terraform and why does it matter? Terraform is how you talk to your infrastructure with code, not clicks. You're not clicking around AWS at 3 a.m. like it's 2009. You are writing code. I need a VPC, three subnets and a database. Terraform says, got it, I'll build it, I'll check it and I'll make sure it stays that way. It's not just convenient, it's control, it's repeatability, it's infrastructure as code. As for 2025, Terraform is at version 1.11, actively developed and widely used. It remains the industry standard for defining infrastructure. Question 2. How does Terraform talk to the cloud? Terraform talks to the cloud through something called providers. These providers are like adapters. They know how to talk to APIs like AWS, Azure, Kubernetes, GitHub, and tons more. In your code, you define required providers, and when you run Terraform in it, it pulls in the right versions and verifies their SHA-256 hashes. The .terraform.log.hcl file locks those versions in place. Think of it like package dependencies. If you don't pin them, expect surprises. And surprises in production? Yeah, not fun. Question 3. What is Terraform state and why it's critical? It's Terraform's memory. The state file stores what resources exist, their IDs, their attributes, and how they're all connected. Lose it and Terraform has no memory, it forgets everything you've built. Which means it might try to recreate your entire production stack from scratch. So where should you store your state file safely? S3 bucket with native locking, available since Terraform 1.11, HCP Terraform, formerly Terraform Cloud. Pro tip, never ever commit your state file to Git, not even for a private repo. Not even just this once. Just don't. Question 4. What is the actual function of plan, apply, destroy and refresh? Think of them as preview, execute, delete and sync. Plan shows what will change. Apply actually makes the changes. Destroy deletes everything in your config. Refresh syncs the state with reality. In upcoming Terraform 1.12, Plan includes refresh automatically, no need to run it separately. Advice: Always run plan before apply, especially if it's Friday, especially if it's late, especially if it's prod. Question 5. What is drift and how do you detect it? Drift happens when your real infrastructure no longer matches your code. Let's say your config says T3 micro, but someone in AWS changed it manually to T3 large. Terraform won't magically know, it only sees drift when you run plan. So how do you detect drifts? If you are using HCP Terraform, good news, it has a built-in drift detector that can send alerts to Slack or Teams. If you are not using HCP Terraform or Terraform Enterprise, make sure to run Terraform plan in CI at least once a day. Drift isn't a bug, it's a warning. It means someone made changes outside of Terraform. And remember, infrastructure as code doesn't like human hands. Question 6. What are modules and how do you use them without creating a mess? Think of a module like a function in code. Write it once, reuse it everywhere. For example, imagine you've got a simple VPC module, you use it in dev, staging and prod, only the IP ranges and names change. The logic stays the same. Keep it simple. One module, one purpose. Don't build a module that creates a VPC, sets up a database and sends 
a Slack notification all in one go. Once your module is solid, you've got options. Publish it to the Terraform registry or even store it as an OCR artifact. This feature is experimental in Terraform 1.12. Question 7. Variables versus secrets. Where is the line? Let's keep it simple. Variables and secrets are not the same. Use variables for anything that changes between environments, but secrets are a different story. Never hard code them. Ever. So where should you put secrets? AWS Secrets Manager or HashiCorp Vault. Or just mark variables as sensitive in HCP Terraform. If you do pass a secret as a variable, make sure it's marked as sensitive equals true. That way it won't show up in the plan output. And starting with Terraform 1.10, you can now use short-lived values to keep secrets out of your state files entirely. Question 8. What if apply fails halfway through? It happens to junior devs, senior engineers, even to me. So here is how to handle it step by step. Run Terraform state list to see what was created. If the resource exists in the cloud but not in the state, use Terraform import. If it shouldn't exist, Remove it from state with Terraform state RM. Then we run plan and verify everything looks clean. Terraform now supports moved and removed blocks, so you can refactor without manually editing the state file. That means less risk, no manual hacking, just clean refactoring. Beautiful! Question 9. How do you separate dev stage and prod? There are three proven approaches. Workspaces, simple but hard to scale. Folder structure, like environments, slash dev, stage, prod, the golden standard, Terragrant, great for multi-account or multi-team setups. But whichever method you choose, there is one rule you should never break. One backend, one state, one environment. Never mix dev and prod in the same state file. That's like storing fire and gasoline in the same drawer. Question 10. How do you shift security left? Security isn't something you add later. It starts with your Terraform plan. That's where policy as code comes in. Tools like OPA, Sentinel, Chekhov, and Sneak IAC help you catch issues early. For example, you write a rule. All S3 buckets must use KMS with the right setup Terraform checks that during the plan. If it fails, the run is blocked. Some of these tools run right in your CI pipeline. Others plug into HCP Terraform directly. Want to go deeper? Terraform test lets you write unit tests for your modules and it fits right into your CI pipeline. Security should be part of how you build, not something you fix later. And that's it. 10 questions, 10 real answers, not just to help you survive an interview, but to help you walk in confident, prepared, and dangerously well-informed. If you learned something new today, smash that like button, it really helps the channel. If DevOps, containers, and cloud are your thing, hit subscribe and ring that bloody bell so you don't miss what's coming. Which Terraform question in this video made you stop and think? Drop it in the comments, I want to know what clicked for you. Want to connect with other IT pros? Join our DevOps community on Discord, link below. Support the channel and get access to premium DevOps insights on Patreon. Check it out in the description. That's it for today. Keep building, keep innovating. May your Terraform plan always be clean and green. And I'll see you in the next one.